guys, welcome to the Serving It Up podcast. This is episode 10, where we get to uncover the stories of individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. And now today, today's guest has become a familiar face for many people all over the world. The DJ and the maestro on the ones and twos, taking care of the hit popular show, Tea with Gary V. Asians don't raise in, a freak of nature. He shocked the globe when he revealed how old he was. And Gary himself said that he went from riding BMX bikes to now being able to produce any podcast or video in the world. Welcome to the podcast, not Justin, but Dustin. Dustin <laughs> Lee. What's up, dude? Thank you for having me. Welcome. How are you? Great. You know, yeah. looking forward to eating. <laughs> yeah, you got a, I remember before you got on, you got like a fresh haircut. You're all good. Um, you are in New Jersey. Yep. New Jersey. Yeah, and right outside, right outside New York. Right outside New York. Cool. And all right. So like you said, you want to get going and get a little hungry. So <laughs> on the podcast, I always tell people, um, what's a drink or a food that you want to bring that we can eat? Because Billion Savant, he was a lawyer in a gosh for him. And uh, he was someone that like right on top of Iron Chef in the beginning would have a quote and it's like, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you who you are. So Dustin, what did you bring? We were going with hot wings today. You got hot wings. Yeah. I'm, I had to make my own. I got to make my own. So <laughs> I made my own. So I would have made my own, but I, I just, I, I crammed too much stuff in today and I didn't have enough time. So I just bought them. So where's your hot wings from? Uh, it's a place called Juicy Platters. It's like a, it's a halal food spot, like a local halal food spot, but they have really good wings in my opinion, like one of the best. So I like their wings. Flats or drums? Um, both. If you had to choose one. No, flats. They're flats. Yeah. You like flats most? Huh. I don't know. I mean, I, sometimes I think I like drums more, but okay. then I ended up making the flats cleaner like i end up uh, way cleaner and i'm like but i don't know I, I, that's, I, that's why i'm like it's it's a thing that i'm kind of trying to figure out on my own <laughs> i like drums because like i like the nug i like the cartilage the cartilage oh, the yeah. two ends that's my it's the asian in me i can't i can't help it dude <laughs> i don't i don't like the cartilage <laughs> yeah you know they you know they sell those Really? Like if you go to like grocery stores, you can buy chicken cartilage. Like if you go to like say izakayas and stuff, like Japanese izakayas, they'll sell those like as a dish. They're like seven dollars a pound. Jesus. They're expensive. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm good. <laughs> that's, you guys can all enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Let's let's have a bite. Cool. Let's have a bite before we get started. So I'm gonna grab a way. I'm gonna grab. A, I'm a drum guy, so I'm going in. Oh, I'll drum. I'll join you in the drums. <laughs> So for me, um, I had a feeling you, for some reason, you would go spicy. So I marinated, marinated mine with like Thai chilies, fish sauce, soy sauce, and then a little bit of, uh, a little bit of honey. Mm. But mm. are you getting like buffalo or what do you- Yeah, what mm. I'm with the classic buffalo. Cool. I'm a spicy boy. <laughs> All right, so I've been following, like I've been following Gary Vee for a while now and the new tea with Gary V was something that I think it's by far my favorite. It's like, I think my favorite um, project that you guys have done. And that's actually how we connected because when I first saw the first episode, Gary's like, Oh, Dustin, and people are calling Dustin. And finally he showed who you are. I'm like, who's this Asian dude? Who's this Asian guy? <laughs> and then it was that. And then at the, right after that, I was like, maybe he's just for one episode. And I saw you for the next episode and then kept on seeing you. I'm like, Yo, I'm really proud. I think the Asian in me is like, yes, go, go, Dustin. I was like, you're almost like the D Rock now. Yeah. Of, you know, the live stream part. Yeah. Live stream. And it's been really cool. So that's where we've been. And that's sort of where we started. So, first off, congrats on that. That's huge. Thank you. That's huge. You've become like a big star. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we're going to get right into something. So, while cool. you're doing that, I need to share my screen because okay. we have to talk about something right now. Uh oh which is so important <laughs> which is extremely important i feel like i already know what it is you i feel like i know what it is but i want to see okay hold up hold up i'm not as good as you are so <laughs> it's all good we're gonna have to do this let's see 
eating my wings disgustingly anyway. You? Yeah. Just eating it like a savage. This guy. Here we go. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Boys, all right. Put it upside down. All the flavor, baby. All the flavor, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have to talk about this. We have okay. to talk about this nonsense. I'm telling you, it's the best way to eat it. So, for everybody who just watched, <laughs> Dustin likes to eat pizza upside down. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind this is what? So, I didn't actually originally think of this. I'm, it was a friend of a friend that I heard about it from when I was like uh, 18. Oh yeah, um, for context, I'm 35, so that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, hey, you're 35, guys. This is what yeah. I mean by you shocked the world. Like everybody, <laughs> I remember that day, Gary B and everybody was just like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it all the time. I've been carded forever. But, uh, oh yeah, but the pizza. Um, my friend was just like, or my friend of a friend was saying how we're all eating pizza the wrong way. And because you want to have the cheese and the sauce hit your tongue first. And I'm like, all right, let me try that. So then I ate it upside down. I was like, damn, it's so much better. <laughs> so then that's just how I've been eating it. Like I, all the, like as much as I can. I mean, when it's not, when it's possible, I, I will be honest. Like sometimes it is hard uh, to do it upside down just cause like if it's really, really saucy or cheesy or it has a ton of toppings or something, but when it's, when it's doable, always upside down <laughs> and no. it's not like you don't have to you don't have to like flip it completely and just be like that like i just hold it like this and then i i go like that <laughs> so no one eats it like that dude they will now <laughs> watch okay. everyone listening everyone listening right now is probably gonna be like let me try that shit next time oh yeah sorry bro. am i allowed to curse yeah, yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> but bro look i saw you do that and i really for like the longest time analyzed it <laughs> like the, the me, because like I go into I I know about the food science and like things about it, and I understand the logic. You know, it's going to be the first contact. You're going to get your your fats, your carbs, and everything, and you'll get your flavor. But it doesn't emphasize or help make the pizza taste better in regards to texturally. Hmm. So the reason it's the vice versa is you get soft, chewy, tender, and then crunch. Mm -hmm. Eat it the other way, the top of your roof and everything just gets crunch, and then the texture's all different. I see what you're saying, but I guess I'm just more of a, I just really like sauce. Like, I always get extra sauce on my pizza. Okay. And, like, I did peanut butter the other day. I, I was just about to say, I was like, you don't really <laughs> Pizza, you're do you're a maniac. You're Same just thing. everything upside down. Yeah. But um, I just like the way that like I like bread, but but I don't want to taste it first. I want to taste everything else first. <laughs> That's just me. Um, what I want to ask was, um, what do you call it? Let's see. I was I was just about to ask you something. And you said something else. Uh, pizza. Peanut butter. Oh, peanut butter, yes, but pineapples. Okay. What are you pineapple on pizza? Oh, uh, um, it's more of a depends kind of thing. Like, what's it depending on? Hmm. If it's like a New Jersey, New York pizza, I don't because I'd rather just have the enjoyment of the sauce and the cheese and pepperoni. But if it's like a Domino's type of thing, like that, I'm not expecting like super, like gourmet pizza i guess you could say i put i get i get pineapple on it sometimes okay. but i don't i don't pick it over other toppings like it's more of like so like we have i don't know if you have a blaze pizza in your area so in our area, we, i know yeah, it's, it's like a build your own pizza type of thing and it's like 11 bucks for a flat rate of like you can just put whatever the hell you want on it so those times i put pineapple because it's it's already free so it's like i'm just gonna put it on and I, yeah, that's where my cheap side kind of comes out. I mean, I'm kind of like it's the Asian so, in us. It's yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's free, yeah, 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 more. Give it more, more that. 
<laughs> oh, that's what it was. I wanted to talk to you about exactly, and you brought it up was Domino's too. So mm. you're gonna, I think you're gonna hate me for this. You're gonna be like, <laughs> hell, you're gonna be like, I'm never on this podcast again. But I haven't had, and for the viewers who's, who are listening or watching, I actually haven't had a cheese pizza in like six years. Wow. I only eat pizza cheeseless now. Is that like a diet thing or because you just don't it like cheese? It started off as a diet thing. Oh, okay. But then now it's become a, a thing that I just love. And specifically, it's Domino's. Interesting. Because so, Domino's pizza sauce has got extra spicy, sort of really great marinara. Yeah. And what I like about it is that their dough and everything is great. So it started off with like a diet thing where originally I was doing this diet where it's no fats very, and like a lot of carbs. And I was doing okay. like a top load. And you were allowed to have any simple, simple carbs and everything as long as there's no fats and no protein. So I wanted pizza. Pizza made sense. I just took off the cheese and it was perfect. And then ever since then, I just love it. So uh, Domino's is my favorite pizza joint um, by far. If it's like fast food or like in general, not going to lie, not going to lie. It's because a, it's a great crust or whatever. The sauce is amazing. But when you go online and you can customize, I don't know if anybody knows, but this is the Asian names again, where say you get like a four topping pizza, right? I know where you're going already. You go four on eight, one side. And four on the other. Yes. Yes, Dustin. <laughs> I when I when I discovered that when I first ordered online like a while ago I was like oh wait this one counts as just one <laughs> or like just two or whatever I was like oh I, shit awesome <laughs> I thought it was a glitch the first time and I'm like I'm not gonna say anything and just go buy it and then next time I'm like does it work again and it was like it still happened I was like man so good yeah once I learned that hack I always did it yeah so like for anybody who's watching go Domino's you can you can make basically for me because I love multiple things. I like samples. So like when I want to order one pizza, I get two. Exactly. I technically same, get same two. thing with me. That's why I love buffets. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I actually have a little soft spot for like dirty, cheap Chinese buffets. Me too. I mean, it depends. Like there's some good ones around here. And I think I got spoiled. Like I went to like, there weren't even like the top, they weren't like top of the line or anything, but they were just good, good quality. Like just tastes like regular takeout Chinese food. And then I went to the one I used to go to with my dad. That was like definitely not as good quality. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm coming back here again. <laughs> it was just like, it felt like it was day old type of stuff. And I was like, yeah, I don't like this, but I definitely like Chinese buffets. Like those are awesome. <laughs> you have a, do you have a guilty Chinese food? Um, I'd say pork lo mein. Really? Probably. Yeah. I usually get chicken and broccoli, but I think pork lo mein is like one thing I'm always like, damn it, why'd I get that <laughs> afterwards? <laughs> oh. Like I just feel like shit afterwards. Do you guys have something called Bourbon Saint Grill? Sounds familiar. It's like a food court chain. It's almost like a yeah. small kind of. I think like, I've seen it at the mall. There's something about that bourbon chicken. I don't know what it is. It's just really, <laughs> really good. It's like a guilty thing. I never but, had it, so I don't know. Um, okay, so now we talk about chicken. <laughs> fried chicken. So you say pizza is one of your big things. Fried chicken, your kryptonite. Yeah. What What about fried chicken? Do you love? Like, what makes it your thing? Um. Well. I guess the crispiness, like I like the breading. I think that's what it really is the most. Um, especially when I discovered Korean fried chicken, I was like, oh my God, mm. I can't go back anymore. Like, like I used to just really like KFC as a kid, I think, because my dad would buy it. And then I liked Popeyes um, because it was just tasted a little bit better. It's way better. Way yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. Now I know it's way better. But like at the time, I was just like, oh, this is this is a little better than KFC. <laughs> but then, but then once I discovered Korean fried chicken, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't like, I I still eat Popeye's, but it's like nowhere near the same level in my opinion. It's just so much breading. I think <laughs> that it tastes great. <laughs> like it sauced? What's that? Do you like it sauced? Um, like these are yeah. these are breaded and sauced. I think it depends. It has to be like right out of the fryer. Cause like, 
these have kind of been sitting for a while, so kind of got a little soggy. Yeah, yeah. And that I don't really like, but surprisingly, the Korean fried chicken sauce is like I I think I left it out for like twenty minutes once for mistake, and then I ate it, and it was still pretty crispy. I was like, whoa. I think it's just the way they bread it, probably. Yeah, but, the sauce is super easy to make too. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to make. So um, let's talk into that. Food's pretty cool. I'm going to bring into something called In the Weeds. Cool? So okay. In the Weeds is our segment where it's almost like rapid fire of food questions. And for yeah. us in the restaurant industry, In the Weeds is when we're in the shits. It's when we're slammed. All the orders are in. We're rushing and trying to get things going. Okay. So I'm going to just throw you a couple questions and then first thing that comes to your mind. Cool? Cool. Favorite fried chicken spot in New York or in New Jersey? Banchan chicken. Okay. Korean place. <laughs> Should boneless chicken wings be banned? No. Are boneless chicken wings chicken wings? Not the same. <laughs> Deep dish or New Jersey style? Mm. That's tough. I mean, since, since I'm a little health conscious, I will say New York, New Jersey style. Okay. What do you think of people who eat it crust first? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay to fold pizza? What, what, say that again? Is it okay to fold pizza? I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I was originally going to say, but. What are you going to say? <laughs> I'm going to say if you're a little bitch. <laughs> But I'm just joking. Um, no, that's pretty normal around here. But now with the upside down thing, I, I don't do that. Like, I try not to. Unless, like I said, it's necessary. Is it a, should it be a sin if people only eat chicken wings in the, in the center and leave the outsides? 100%. Facts. Every time I watch Hot Ones, I get pissed off. Me too. <laughs> Me too. And then, okay, last one. Joe's or Prince? What's that? Pizza. Joe's Pizza or Prince Pizza? I never had either of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thought you would. Okay, yeah. scratch that. And then we'll <laughs> go next thing. Next thing, we're going to go into look good, dude. So look good is all about health and fitness, lifestyle, aesthetics. Um, first things first, I want to say it's not, but so you used to be on keto. Mm -hmm. You're obviously not on keto now. Yeah. <laughs> how long have you been on keto or how was your experience with keto? Uh, I did it for seven or eight months in last year, 2009, or from February 2019 to about August. Um, I liked it. I still would do it. And I, I did um, actually like afterwards, but I just wanted to enjoy food more, like just mm -hmm. shit, like shitty food quote unquote, like I just missed eating like wings, like breaded wings, um, cereal, cookies and stuff like that. What was the, what was the reason for it? Uh, originally I just saw it a lot. Like I saw it trending on like YouTube and stuff and it just got me interested. So then, well, I originally wanted to like try to lose my belly fat because I've had this like pouch, like beer belly, like pouch since college. And like, no matter how hard I worked out, it just couldn't get rid of it. Like, it was just impossible. It's that like skinny fat kind of vibe. Yeah. I know exactly like, what you mean. Yeah, I just couldn't get rid of it. And it was just like the one spot I was like, always annoyed me whenever I'm like trying to do like setups or trying to like bend over or something. And it just looked weird. Um, so then, yeah, I just wanted to try it. I, I mean, my girlfriend said she did something similar like years ago. And she said it wasn't too bad. So I was like, all right, maybe I'll just, I just did a little research. Um, and I thought, okay, maybe I could do this. So then I just wanted to try it. And then I started learning more about how it's not just for like fat burning and stuff. Like there's a lot of like cognitive benefits to yeah. it and stuff. And I, I really did feel that. Like I just, my head was so much clearer. I felt way sharper. I was able to like focus um, at work more. And yeah, I really liked it. I think everyone should try it, like if you can. Um, and it, it wasn't like, 
like I think people are worried about that. It could cost more to do, but it really didn't. Like I, I saved a good amount of money because I would always have to, because I can't trust outside food basically. So I would pack my lunches to work every single day. Yeah. And I would eat at home because I would just get home late at night. And there are still other options as far as like keto options that still taste good. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's just, I did miss the junk food. So like I had to cave in. And you went like, I want to say real keto. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't people, do. A lot of people go, say they go keto, but they're not really keto. Like you yeah. did the strips and everything. Like I, that's one thing that like, I, I thought it was just going to be like, oh, I get to eat bacon and eggs all day or something. And it's like, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Um, so I ate a lot of like, uh, grass finished, grass fed meat and a lot of vegetables, like pretty much as much vegetables as I can. And that's in like kimchi and like fermented stuff. Uh, just like, it was like, it was clean keto in my opinion. Like I did have, I did need to still like, uh, have my sweet fix. So I would get like halo ice cream or uh just things with like stevia and stuff like that real quick do you prefer halo top or arctic zero have you had arctic zero i never had arctic zero i had uh enlightened i think oh yeah, yeah yeah um halo top tastes better enlightened i think is lower carb but there was this one enlightened like i used to always get enlightened peanut butter chocolate because that's like just what I always get <laughs> and then they came out with a one that had only one gram of sugar and carb in it and it just tasted disgusting it was just straight up fake sugar i was like oh my god i can't eat this and that was just really bad but after that i just went back to halo top and i just try to manage not eating the entire carton <laughs> did you uh, what was do you remember your ratio of like fat to protein um no, I didn't. I didn't really measure it. Um, I just kept to, kept pretty much the same routine. Uh, I would do intermittent fasting at the same time. So, actually, that's. Oh, go, yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. My bad. No. Um, so I would break my fast usually with uh, MCT or brain octane oil first. Then I would have usually just like chicken thighs with kale, like a, just a ton of kale and an avocado. Like that's pretty much what I would eat for lunch and maybe yogurt sometimes, um, Bulgarian yogurt. What's and, Bulgarian yogurt? Um, I don't know exactly. I just pretty much follow this one YouTuber that just says it's better than Greek and- Is it thicker or? It's more, um, I think there's like a process where it doesn't, it doesn't get filtered. I think that's what it was. Okay. Where it doesn't like lose like nutrients. Um, there's only one company that I know that makes it. Like they have it at Whole Foods. Mm. It's, there's only one brand that I've seen. I've never seen any other brands. Never heard of it. That's cool. Um, I forgot. It's like I don't even know how to pronounce it. But yeah, I'll send it. I'll send a link to you later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would just eat that with like hemp seeds too, and just I have uh, smart sweets. Even though I just found I realized that they're terrible for you. So oh. Yeah, they're Canadian. I, I they're, Canadian. they're Canadian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think like like Vancouver. Right. Mm. Yeah, I didn't realize uh, tapioca starch was such a. It was really bad for your glycemic index. So it's uh -huh. like, even though you might be in ketosis, it's like messing with your insulin really badly. So I was like, oh crap, I can't eat these anymore. Like I was, I was after like six months, <laughs> and I was like, crap, I can't eat those anymore. They are. Um, but yeah, uh, I love the experience. It was great. I just really liked it a lot. And I think people should try it. Um, I did, I do it, uh, butcher box. So like I saved so much, I didn't have to go to the store. Mm. Uh, it's like one fifty a month, which sounds like a lot, but I was getting a lot. Like I'd never finished all my meat in, t in an entire month. Like it'll always go right to the exact refill amount. Nice. So like, it was perfect. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I just, like I said, the cookies and cereal got to me. <laughs> it's the inner fat kid in us. But that's, he yeah. weighs into something else that I wanted to bring up, and you brought it up too, was fasting. So, were, 
you, you do intermittent fasting. I, I remember I, I talked to you about it. So we had to figure out when you can, you know, eat the different things <laughs> or whatever, but you did, so you did keto with intermittent fasting, uh -huh. which is something that a lot of, I guess, more advanced people on a keto diet will end up doing just help, help speed things up. Um, how long do you fast for? Um, nowadays, usually 18 hours. Okay. Um, but I was doing, before I even did keto, I was doing intermittent fasting for a year before that. Um, just because my girlfriend actually knew all this stuff way before I did. Is she into fitness too? Like not, not fitness, but I think just a different type of diet. She's a vegan now. Okay. Um, we still intermittent fast. Um, I mean, she, she kind of had to like drop it off a little bit because I think she wasn't getting enough calories with her diet. So wow. I think she only does maybe more like 12 or 14 hours. I was just going to say, I was just I actually, uh, yeah, I think it's actually better for women to do yeah. a little less than men. Mm -hmm. Cause I was going to, it's, it's hard to also intermittent fast when you have like a significant other. Yeah. But you guys do it together. It makes it that yeah. way. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay, cool. Luckily it worked out for both of us. So. So then do you, you do the 18, six right now? Yeah. Um, sometimes I cave, like I never do less than 16. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to hold off even longer. Like before the pan pandemic started, uh, every Monday, like Andy, he's our, uh, team director. Okay. He would fast from Sunday to Tuesday, I think. 48 hours? Yeah. Maybe less. Actually, no, maybe to Monday night. I think that's what it was. I think it was just 24 hours, I, I believe. Okay. Maybe even 36 sometimes, but I just wanted to try 24 hours. So then I started doing that where from Sunday to Monday night, um, I didn't realize I could. Like I, it was the first time I did it was so, so hard. I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> After doing that so many times, like it got so much easier to control myself. Yeah. Um, like I remember even when I first did keto with intermittent fasting, like I would go biking and I would just feel so drained because I feel, I felt I, maybe, I don't know if it was a mental thing, but I just felt like I didn't have enough strength or like whatever, like protein to like ride. But now, like I, I could do, I do it no problem. I prefer to not be be on like a during a fasted state than having something to eat, just because. What's, uh, what's the longest fast you've done? Twenty five. That was it. Yeah. Did you when you were doing keto, did you get the keto flu? The, yeah, the first time. Yeah. Um, was it bad? It was just a really bad headache. Like, it just felt like my head was really pounding. Um, not to the point where like I couldn't go to work, but it was just like irritating. I was like, oh man, fucking kill me right now. Like, um, like it hurt, but after a week it was gone. And, um, then like I tried, I, go, I went back on keto, like after my seven months, like took a month break because oddly, I mean, I don't, everyone thinks that it's because I was doing keto, but I don't think it was, but I had to get an appendicitis. I got appendicitis. So I had to get my appendix removed. Okay. But I think it's because I started eating like shit again mm. and it caused it, but I don't know. I mean, people can speculate, but I don't know. I didn't think, I didn't think it was because of keto. Wow. Um, I just thought it was because I was eating clean for so long and then just all of a sudden ate like shit and then it probably caused some kind of clog in my appendix or something. It's funny because uh, my brother got it too. Appendicitis? Yeah, he was never on no diet or anything like that. It's just one of those like things that just, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like I asked the doctor too and she was like, it can happen when you're two years old or when you're 92 years old. Yeah, so like exactly. it, didn't, it didn't really have anything to do with your diet. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, I wanted to talk next about is Muay Thai. You're very yeah. much Muay Thai. Um, I saw, I started seeing when you started posting your like Muay Thai stuff, I was like, yo, this guy, can, this guy's into that. He's very much into fitness as well. So how long have you been doing Muay Thai? Like, is that like a professional thing or like just a hobby? Um, I started in 2007 with my friend because, uh, funny story, 
we were at a house party with our, with our other friend. Our other friend caused a fight and it was like 50 against five people. <laughs> and were you the 50 or were you the five? I was the five. Okay. But I was trying to like just break it up, but it just got me into this state where I was like, like I just felt helpless. Like I couldn't help my friend. I couldn't defend myself. I, just, I didn't know what I was doing. So then I was like, I don't, I never want to feel that again, where I just feel so helpless where I can't defend myself. So then I just started doing like looking up on Google, like where I can learn to like, I think I was like looking for maybe like kickboxing at first or something. Okay. And then I just happened to find this Muay Thai gym that was pretty local to us. And then I asked my other friend, not the one that caused the fight, my the friend that I just went to the party with and he's like, Hey, you, you want to do this with me? And he's like, yeah, sure. So then we started training in 2007 and I was plant Like he wanted to fight right away just cause I think that he just wanted, he just had that in him and I was planning to, but I just ha couldn't commit to it as much. Um, then, but then decided, oh, okay, let, let's try it. I started like kind of easing into it with uh, like, a private trainer just kind of going into fight training okay and then but part of muay thai is running and i was running a lot but i wasn't running properly i was really i was doing a lot of heel like whatever it's heel stomping i guess it's called and just really big strides and it just completely destroyed my knees um and yeah i just i was like yo i can't i can't train because like my knees are shot so I've been on and off a lot since 2007. Um, now my knees are, they're still not the greatest, but I can, I can take it. Like I, I run a, a very, very weird way, <laughs> um, which is the only way I can manage to have them not feel like so much pain. Um, okay. I kind of, I, I take like really tiny strides and all toes. Um, okay. So yeah, it's worked out. Send me a video of you running. Just like, okay. you're going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. People make fun of me at the gym when I'm at the, on the treadmill. Cause I look like, I look like this, like, <laughs> so it's funny, but it's the only way I can run. So I could, I can't help. But like, when you told me your story, I was like, so you're, what you're saying is you basically, after that party, you wanted to be Tony Ja from Ong Bak and just wanted to <laughs> literally just take off. <laughs> literally yeah you literally t I, I didn't want to say it because it was embarrassing but yeah <laughs> I, I watched Ong Bak way too many times I'm like yeah I gotta learn I gotta learn that <laughs> I get you so what you're saying is you're a cold-hearted killer <laughs> you're a killer no I'm not it, if anything Muay Thai really humbled me it right. was like when we would spar I would think I could take like all the hits and I could like react good I realized, no, <laughs> not at all. Like, I was getting hit a lot. Um, I was not reacting and countering very well. So, yeah, it really humbled me. No, I, like, because I was always like, when during pad work, I would think, oh yeah, now now I can go out and kick anyone's ass. But when I would do actual sparring, I'm like, fuck, I ain't kicking anyone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you, cause like I did. Uh... I did Taekwondo, so at the same, so I got the same sort of vibe and like mm. same thing. I'd be like, he might be able to be stronger than me, but if I can withstand the kicks, so then I can't really, you know, then that's the game plan. Um, cool. Uh, next thing, something else that you're really into is BMX. I, I sort of talked about it before, and uh, I can't remember which episode it was, but that was the first time that I really heard you talk about BMX aside from just posting. But there was an episode on T with Derek B. I think a kid came out. He's like, I really like bikes and stuff and you hopped on and you yeah. hopped on and you're like I can't help you just you know you sort of wanted to come in and talk about it um so yeah let's talk about BMX like when did you start um started I believe it was 1996 maybe 95 oh, 95 is when I first right when my parents got me my first BMX bike um but in 1996 I remember like it was the last day of sixth grade and my, 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 one of my, my best friend, he, he started making dirt jumps by this, 
just local park, like an actual park where it's just, there's nothing there. Well, our dirt jumps, like the mounds, I guess. Yeah. Like oh. just, we just dig and just make like shape it into ramps basically. Okay. Um, and then he's like, Hey, we're going to go here after school. If you want to come I'm like, all right, cool. So then I went, I saw him do it and I was like really scared to try. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. And then I did it and I didn't die. And I was like, holy shit, I didn't die. <laughs> and it was just like an adrenaline rush from there. And I think I just always got like addicted to that feeling. Um, but yeah, it started in 2000, or 1996, I think. And um, yeah, just been doing it ever since then, like on and off also. Like just my life has always been like um, hard to like dedicate to things like that as far as like sports. Um, I was always like, I wanted to do BMX then, then soccer came along. So I tried that oh, okay. and I hated that. And then went back to BMX. Then the parties, like just going to parties a lot with my friends. And then that just kind of took away from BMX. Like I just didn't want to on the weekends. Mm. And then Muay Thai, then that was just really hard to balance because they're both really physical. Yeah. Um, and now back pretty much back to square one. <laughs> like I do both, but like it's hard to commit to one of them. And like for, for someone who's not in BMX and watching like me watching your posts and stuff, I'm like, yo, this guy's really good. Like the things that he's like, I was like, these are insane. It's like intense. Um, what's been like the worst injury? Have you like um they're kind of different. I mean, in my opinion, the worst is the one that costs the most expensive to fix, <laughs> oh, which was uh, my teeth. These are all fake. These front four ones. Really? Yeah. Um, it's not even really BMX related, so it's kind of stupid. But I was riding my bike. I was crossing the street when we were going somewhere. This was when I was, I think, 15. And I was crossing the street and this guy in a plumber's van was like, get the fuck out of the road. I'm like, so then I looked this way because he was going the opposite way I was going. Okay. And then I said, fuck you or something. And then I didn't realize there was a car stopped at a red light in front of me. So then I looked back and it was just too late. I was this close. It was a van and I, my face just went right into the back of the window and it just broke my teeth. Um, so yeah, that sucked. <laughs> But, um, Dustin, Dustin. <laughs> that's not really BMX related. So it's kind of hard to like say, I mean, I was on my bike, but it wasn't because I was doing a trick. Okay. But, but before that, um, there was, I actually have a clip on my, it's probably on my Instagram or it's definitely on my YouTube though. But when I was, I think 14, I was trying to do a trick on a little rail. Like it was, I didn't even like think it was a real trick. It was just kind of like me goofing around. And my friend decided to film it though anyway. And I tried to go, like it was just like a kind of thing where I hit my peg on my front peg on the rail, but I, I missed and then got stuck under my pedal. My hands got like kind of caught underneath my body and I just went straight to the sidewalk. And I got up and I looked at my friend, I'm like, are my, are my teeth okay? <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, your teeth are fine, but your face is pretty fucked up. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, really? I'm like, let me see. And then, because he was filming the entire time, and then we watched the playback. I'm like, oh no, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> like, I, di I didn't even feel that much pain. I was just like terrified that my parents were going to beat the shit out of me. Oh, that's such and, a human mentality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so that that was definitely the first time that I got really hurt, I guess. Um, the second time was like maybe a year after that. <laughs> I went to New York City. There was a skate park there. Um, I don't remember this because I guess I hit my head. I didn't even. Re I don't remember any of it, but I don't recall my hitting my head that badly. But um, I just tried to go over a jump. I, I I spun out. Must have hit the ground like a weird way. Just got knocked out. Um, this was when I was like 14 or 15. So like I, I had like I can't even imagine if I had a 14 or 15 year old riding bikes in New York City today. Like, especially if, since we live we live in New Jersey. Like I'm surprised my dad didn't kill me for that. <laughs> but I all I remember is waking up in the ER 
and my dad was there and he was definitely not happy. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, I just, I think I just got a concussion. That was like the worst part of it. Um, and then the other thing was just, I broke my finger once doing some dumb trick and it just never healed correctly. Oh. But yeah, other than that, not too many serious injuries. Like, okay. I just had like stitches. I got, a, I got a, like preface. Those are serious injuries, dude. Well, yeah, like it's not as bad as like, <laughs> yeah, like I never, I mean, knock on wood, I never really broke my arm or like broke my foot or leg or anything like that. Like those are like major, I guess, injuries in my, in my opinion, at least. Mm. Um, but yeah. Gotcha. Um, one last thing about BMX is you are with Merit, Merit <laughs> BMX. And like, are you, uh, are you like, a, how, what's your relationship there? Um, so the two owners are good friends of mine. Well, one more than the other, um, Mike Brennan and Sean Curran. Uh, I grew up riding with Mike. Gotcha. So we're, we were just best, like pretty much best friends. And he just kind of hooked it up. Like, right. I don't, I don't feel like I deserve to be on the sponsor team or anything. <laughs> Um, I'm considered to be on the flow team, I think that's what it's called, which is basically just getting free parts, mm. um, which is, I'm very, very grateful for, but I definitely don't deserve it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I'm just on the flow team, I guess awesome. you could say. Cool. Um, for this one, we're going to go into reps and sets. Just once again, rapid fire questions. There's really only two. I only have two I really want to ask you. <laughs> um, so first one is, Favorite BMX athlete? Athlete? I guess Garrett Reynolds. Okay. Pro BMX or pro Muay Thai fighter? For me? If you were to choose. Oh, man. Probably BMX. I, I, I want it. Like, I've always thought Muay Thai, but it's – I don't think uh, – the damage that it does to you is worth the money, at least not with Muay Thai. Like UFC, I can kind of understand because there's just way more money in it. Yeah. Like MMA in general, but Muay Thai is really, really tough, especially in Thailand. Like they're, they do it to survive, like, like, cause it's their only source of income. And I know, I know like there's like one championship that does like Muay Thai also, but my like I have a friend that from our gym he's a pro Muay Thai fighter and he's definitely not like living it up <laughs> um, it's it's tough so I just don't think the damage you're getting like as far as like all the head kicks and all that stuff is worth it even though I really love Muay Thai and I think it's beautiful uh, I would love to do it as a pro it's just that's definitely like really tough on your body and I mean, BMX is too, but at least you get to wear a helmet. <laughs> a little cooler. It's yeah, little it's just a little bit more different, yeah. where I think it just has that more uniqueness where I like about it. Gotcha. Um, Got it. And, and I think, like, I, 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 like right now, I have a YouTube channel for, it's pretty much just BMX, and, like, I don't get a, I don't get a lot of views. Justin, Justin, put it on. Put it on. Put it on the screen right now. <laughs> I don't even know how. <laughs> I own Dustin. I own Dustin. <laughs> Get the link. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, okay. Best trick you've landed? Uh, in my opinion, backflip. Like I know it's not not a super impressive to some people, but that's for me. It's just always been like I don't think I could ever do that, and I and the fact that I was able to is just uh, I always like that. All right, sweet. Now let's get into now live great. So live great lifestyle, entrepreneurship, get into the stuff that's a little bit about you aside from food and fitness, right? So you already sort of mentioned it. Tell the people again, how old exactly are you, Dustin? 35, 1984. So I'll be 36 in November. And what age has people like called you up for? All over, man. What's the lowest? What's the lowest you've ever heard? 12. That was like last year. <laughs> I don't know if they're just over-exaggerating when they said that, but they sounded pretty damn serious. They're like, what? This motherfucker's 12. <laughs> what's, 
what's your <laughs> what's your skincare routine? For everyone who's watching, they're like, he probably has some like twelve step Korean beauty. <laughs> no, I just use Clearasil. That's it. I don't. I don't even use lotion. But it's my dad. I'm pretty oh. sure, because uh, he told me like recently how he used to always get carded even when he was 33. But I remember seeing photos of him when he was 33. He still looked like in his 20s, in my opinion, like where I really, I think if I dress correctly, like if I just wore the right clothes, I probably could pull off 15. <laughs> what age would you want to be? Like if you could. That's tough. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't like regretting or wishing anything so it's just hard to say because like yes i am a little older now and it's just harder to do things physically mm -hmm. but i also believe that that can easily be changed if i wanted to like as far as just being more active eating the right stuff like i think that can uh change everything gotcha. i i believe that especially when i was doing keto like i just felt great mm. um so give me a number i honestly i wouldn't change it like yeah. i really wouldn't i don't think i would because i liked all the experiences i went through um i don't i like being a millennial i guess because i just fit in that i think i'm like right on that border of it i like it because i'm not like old where i'm an old fart that like refuses to change their mind but i'm also not a young, like someone that thinks that, oh, this guy's young, doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So I, I kind of like it. There's some respect kind of vibe. Yeah. Like I think, I think I'm right in that in between where it's like not either extreme where I can kind of cater to both. So I, I like that. For me, I was like, I'd love to always be like 23. About 23 or 22 is like, it's like you just graduated from university or college, whatever. You have just enough respect that people will give you enough. But at the same time, you ha they don't respect you enough where you can prove them wrong sometimes. So that's yeah. like my jam. I enjoy it. And you still have, you can do a bunch of cool things. Um, I, mean, I get that. Uh, next thing is, so you work at, you work at Vayner, but before Vayner, what did you go to school for? Um, so I went to college at Rutgers University, which is the New Jersey State College. Okay. And I went for... I, I didn't have a major when I first went and then sophomore year, I decided to be a criminal justice major. <laughs> okay. Um, my initial thought was because I look so young, <laughs> maybe I could become an undercover police officer. Cause I think I was watching to catch a predator a lot <laughs> and I just thought I could be one of those guys <laughs> that like lure the predator in and then catch, we could catch them. I think that's what I was initially thinking. You're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I have a weird, I have a weird mindset. <laughs> so then did you finish it? I did. Um, finished with a criminal justice be a uh, Bachelor of Science, I think. And um, maybe a couple months after that, I just had a really bad interaction with a cop when I got pulled over. Not a horrible one, like not like some uh, police brutality type of thing. It was just like put a really sour taste in my mouth where like, mm. like I was like, fuck, th fuck this. I hate this shit. Like I just didn't respect the way that I was being treated, um, even though I was being like insanely nice. And I just kind of like lost respect for that. So then I just didn't want to do that. Plus it was during the recession where like, it was just kind of, um, I was too like scared to like try to pursue going unemployed, I guess at the time, even though I, now I did it. But um, I had a job that was through college for a book printing company part-time. And then as soon as I graduated, they also offered me a full-time job. And I just kind of went the safe route and just figured I could just be in this office job and get a, like a real salary and not really have to like struggle. So I, I went the safe route and just decided to do the office job. And I did that for seven years after college and just never wanted to pursue the police thing. Okay. Uh, 
and then I just also realized how bullshit like college degree really is <laughs> like yeah. like all I, all it was was like that's the reason why they hired me also because they're like okay he has a college degree like they didn't care what major it was or anything so it was like man this thing is bullshit uh, so that's that's also why I think but I mean of course this is not applying to everybody like this is just for me like I don't, if you're trying to be a doctor you have to go to college <laughs> like I just want to make sure that the big fours and like the financial stuff right but for me like it just it, it just felt like bullshit like I, I didn't need it and I was like it was meaningless for me so then where does criminal justice print shop lead you to Vayner? Um, so then the whole criminal justice thing was kind of like out the door. Didn't, didn't really like, wasn't something that I was going to pursue. Um, at least I didn't want to. Um, so then after seven years of working for the book printing company, uh, my sister's ex now ex offered me a job or like, Gabe said, hey, you should check out this job. Like he was working there too. It was for an insurance company as an applications developer. I don't know shit about fucking computer science. Like nothing. I tried to take that class twice in college and I walked out the first day every single time. I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. But he convinced me that they, they go through like a boot camp program. And he's like, hey, this guy that teaches it, he can teach it to a monkey. Like, it's that easy. I'm like, okay. Like, yeah. I go to the boot camp. I don't know. I didn't understand anything. I was like, fuck, this is, I don't know what I'm doing here. But then I, I was just really close. Like, I got close to uh, the boss. Like, he was like the president of, the, of that division, I think, and, um, or the director of the, that branch. And uh, he hired me and after the boot camp. And I just try to see, like, hey, maybe... I'll just try to keep giving a little bit more effort and maybe I could learn this. And it just wasn't happening. So, like after I was there for two years and it just wasn't happening. Um, then in 2016, uh, I decided, or like my, I was just seeing a lot of signs. Like I don't really believe in the whole, I, at least not at the time, I didn't like believe in signals and stuff like that, or just like fate or anything. But I just saw like signs, like my friends were, I had like two friends that were big YouTubers. Um, I heard, that was the year I discovered Gary. I heard him on the radio and, and he was just talking about like, just not like doing, not being in a job that you hate. And then I, like a couple months later, I saw him again on Facebook. I just saw like someone share a post on Facebook and it was pretty much the same concept, same content. And then I heard uh, Jim Carrey's commencement speech. And then it was just all these little signs that pretty much said, like, if I'm miserable at my job, I really shouldn't do it anymore. Okay. Um, How old were you at that time? Do you remember? Uh, that was 16, so like four years ago, 32. Hmm. And um, decided to take the leap of faith and try to become a YouTuber. Thought, I would, thought that would be so easy. Like, I was very naive to the fact that that's really, really hard. Um, but I also had uh, my Seinfeld meme account. Like, I grew that in, I started that in 2012. Wait, you have, you have a Seinfeld meme account? Yeah, it's just a meme account, like regular, like pretty much typical memes, but it's all Seinfeld content, like as far as the picture and the video and all that stuff. Um, it's called Costanzagrams, if you want to check it out. <laughs> I still have it. Put, put, the, yeah. put the handle on. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was monetizing off of that too. I was doing that for like a year before I quit. And that, plus I thought I could just do like part-time Uber to like survive. Okay. So I quit, uh, pursued the YouTube thing while monetizing off that account and doing part-time Uber, Uber just to like survive, realize how hard YouTube is. Um, a lot of times wanted to give up. Um, then 2017, Gary puts out a video in September or DRock technically puts out a video called like uh, looking for content creators. And I applied, got rejected. Then 
thought I was like, okay, I guess I suck. <laughs> and then a couple months later, I, I don't remember exactly what happened as far as like, I think I applied again. Cause they, I think I saw another thing like on his Instagram or something okay. or um, they just hit me up again. And I think pretty sure I got rejected again. The story is a little cloudy there. I always forget. Cause I kind of, I think I kind of didn't want to remember it. <laughs> but then in February, Andy emailed me and said, Hey, if you're s- still interested in the job, we'd like to s- have you come in for an interview. I was like, all right, cool. Went, met with him, met with Seth and Iris. Um, Andy gave me like a homework assignment. I sent it back the next day and never heard from him. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I fucked that up again. So then I just kind of like lost faith. Uh, started doing the YouTube, kept on doing the YouTube thing, trying. Um, then in June, 2018, I was out filming. I got a, I get a call from a random number. Don't know who it is. Pick it up. It's Andy. He's like, Hey, you still interested in the job? I'm like, yes. And then he said, can you come in tomorrow? I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> so then went in, um, he's told me it was going to be like a two week thing, like a two week trial period to see like if I could handle the work and all that. And I said, okay, cool. Just put my head down, worked as hard as I could for those two weeks. And then he said, you know what? Uh, we're going to actually extend it another two weeks. I was like, all right, cool. Um, that ended up actually being like three weeks, I think, just cause like we have so much stuff going on. So it's just, it wasn't like super priority. I think like the exact date or anything. Um, so then it ended up being like five weeks. Um, then he gave me the, he said, we're going to keep you on as a resident, which is pretty much like a paid internship, I guess. Like you don't get like health benefits and stuff, but you're still kind of like an employee. Okay. Um, did that for about seven months and then got a full-time hire. And yeah, that's pretty much for it from there. I just got to stay. So you were brought on to Vayner to be a content creator. Yeah. Um, I thought it was because of my YouTube channel, but I was definitely not right. I think because it was my, my Seinfeld account, Ah. Uh, because I think, I think I never actually talked to him. I always, I had to talk to Andy about this. I always wondered exactly why he decided to hire me, but I'm pretty sure I heard him once say like, he just knew he like, he saw that I knew how to like work Instagram and okay. Gary, Gary at the time, like he still is, but like, he's really about his Instagram, like wanting it to grow. So I think he, they were looking for people that understood Instagram, understood the content and like what works on there, what doesn't work. And I had around, I think 300,000 followers at the time for that account. So I think they saw that, okay, this, this guy Wait, understands Instagram. 300 K on that Seinfeld account. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think it may be t- may- 300 or 250, I forget. I don't remember exactly. And it's still on. Are you active on it? Yeah. I mean, it's like once a week, but because I just don't have the time. But now it's at uh, 505,000. Dude. Yeah. It's There's no area about it that I could have found that at all. I would have <laughs> about that. What, what's up? I would have asked you so much about it, but yeah. you don't talk about it. Like yeah, because like underground dark. It's like your alter ego that no one knows about. Kind of. I mean, it's also just because I don't like boy. I don't. I don't want to talk about it. Or I just feel like I'm an, like I don't. I don't mind talking about it. It's just I feel like I'm showing off if I bring it up. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I just don't like bringing it up because I'm like, look at me, I got five hundred thousand followers. Like I don't. I just don't want it to come off like that. You don't want the clout. What's up? You don't want the clout. Uh, I mean, I don't I, know. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I know. Um. So. From there, the team with Andy, and I guess the team that you're at now, how did that transfer to T with Gary Vee? So uh, when I got hired, I thought I was going to be like the next D-Rock as far as like filming Gary and editing and all, editing the YouTube and stuff. But then I ended up being more of an editor instead. I think they saw that as my strength where I was kind of like wanting to go more for the stuff that I wasn't good as. Okay. at. Like I wanted to be the camera guy more or I wanted to be the YouTube editor more, even though I was definitely better at Instagram. And I, I kind of, I guess I kind of went against that because I thought 
at the, at the time at least I'm like I didn't I didn't understand the I guess how much worth the value that Gary had on the Instagram account I thought it was kind of like a oh it's just an Instagram account type of thing but I didn't realize how much he valued it so then once I understood that it changed where like I was happy to like edit the Instagram stuff for him um, but at the same time, I was still slowly wanting to do the other stuff too. Like Caleb helped me a lot with like camera work, DRock too, and Seth. Um, and then Seth was on our team. He was a videographer slash the podcast guy, but then he wanted to transition to Vayner Talent. Okay. Meaning there was someone else had to start doing the podcast stuff and the streaming stuff for Gary. And then he's like, hey, you want to do this? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> so then had zero podcasting experience, zero, don't know how to set up a podcast or any of that. And then Seth just was like, here, here you go, do it. And then like, he's like, oh, you do this, 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 this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, I, I don't even know what you're doing here. You were so then, and pretty much sink or swim. Yeah, seriously. Or like, Gary's just, new thing that just was about to pop yeah, just like threw me into the lion's den like for real and like i've watched every single one of them so like i've seen the progression i've yeah. seen it start off on zoom and then to stream yard and then adding all these things and and yeah i was like so i was doing like the ask gary v for a while, like a year before that too okay like, yeah like whenever you had a guest and stuff and all the live streaming stuff i was like seth was doing it for pretty much a year at, when i was there and then like after a year i took over it um, which was, I love it. Like, it's, it's fun. Like I like doing it cause it felt like I was running a TV show. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it transitioned to T because once the pandemic happened, everyone had to stay home, but, uh, Gary still wants to obviously make content. Mm. So then the only thing I knew was zoom at the time. Cause I just didn't know anything. Um, so then I just kind of used the, the skills that I learned from Ask Gary V and just applied it with Zoom, like as far as like, okay, you can just display capture that and then just tr like reroute the audio this way and that way. And then I was like, okay, I think I could make this work. So then I did a bunch of tests on my own and Zoom was the only thing that I knew at the time. Cause like, I think nobody was really thinking about virtual like talking or like I, I was like the only other option was like Google Hangouts and I, I didn't like the way the quality looked. Okay. And I think FaceTime, which I was like, that's no, there's no way that's going to work. So then I thought Zoom was the best option. Um, so then I just connected Zoom to OBS and then we had, we already, we already had OBS and Restream. Like I was working with that a lot for Ask Gary V. And then it was just connecting Zoom to it. That really was the link. And then we started using Zoom for Tea with Gary V on March 23rd, I think it was, the first episode. Um, I wasn't happy with the audio and video quality. Um, and I was just trying to figure out a different way because like Zoom was still like not at it where it is right now, where there's a lot more like things where you could like kind of mess around with. But at the time, it was just so annoying that like, when the next guest popped in, like they would just pop on the screen and I'm like, no, oh, get out of here. <laughs> like <laughs> while Gary was still talking to the first, the, like the first, first guest that was already on. And then just like a person would pop in all of a sudden, like, no, oh, get out of here. And, um, I just hated that. Like, because it, I don't know, it's just kind of like the anal inside of the anal part of me where I'm just like, no, like I just want things to kind of be perfect. Yeah. But, like Gary didn't give a shit, but I just didn't like how people were interrupting. So I was like, okay, I got to figure something else out. So then this guy, uh, Ben Barber, just he, he, uh, DM'd me. He's just a Gary fan. He's like, hey, you should check out StreamYard. Uh, that's what I use. Like he's pretty much doing what I do, except for like just other people, like just smaller influencers, I think. And um, he showed it to me and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, pretty neat. And then... I didn't, I, I definitely, I noticed the first thing I noticed was like, you could have people like in the chat area, like you could read their chat. And I knew Gary would love that because he just loves reading comments. Okay. And then that was like the thing that was like, 
that made me say like try to convince him to be like hey we should use this instead because you could read this live comment and say oh i fucking love that and i was like yeah is it cool if we try it out i was like yeah let's do it so then we switched to Streamyard, and haven't looked back since and they've just been making a lot of updates i wanted um, to actually do Streamyard, and then i asked you about it before i even started this whole podcast i was like should I do Zoom? Should I do StreamYard? And because I wanted, I do, I did my cooking classes and stuff. And at that time, um, StreamYard only allowed, I think, nine people. Right. Nine people at that time. And then for me, I was like, if I have a class that's more than nine people, then I can't. So then I ended up going with Zoom. But I think there was, eventually they'll get there. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy to watch you grow that whole thing. Like, what was it, 45 episodes or something like that? Um. I think I we're up to, 45. Yeah, I think we're up to 55 or somewhere in the 50s. I know that. Yeah, it's it's a lot. And but it's honestly, like I said, it's one of my favorite ones because it's so it's real people, real situations that you might or we or in general would want to ask. Yeah. But you know, you're like, oh, I'm not the only person who thinks this way or whatever. And it's because it's not at the office, it's at people's houses and stuff, there's this realness to it that makes it authentic that I think it really touches people on that. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you is, you went through it, which was kind of cool too, which was like some of the behind the scenes, how much work it goes behind these kind of things. Um, what was your favorite, t- what was your favorite um, tea with Gary Vee moment? If you have one. Um, it doesn't have to be inspirational. It could be something yeah. that you fucked up on or like. Yeah, like I'm always, I'm, I, I, like, I guess I put comedy, like, at the top of everything else, so, um, I mean, the, the first, I guess, one, the first one I remember is just that, I forgot his name, his name was, like, Ishmael or something like that, but it was, I don't even remember the topic, but I just remember it was definitely the first one that, like, uh, Gary went really deep in, like, it was a 20-minute segment, and it was, like, the first one that, like, really was emotional I think uh, he had like an orange shirt on and glasses he just kind of looked like my f- a friend of mine that's why I think that's why I kind of like recall that um, but I guess the next one would be just like when Gary's internet like got cut off and I was oh. on air with Jerry oh. Rice and I'm like can we quickly what, what am I supposed to do here <laughs> I actually love when Gary has to leave and yeah he'll just be like Dustin take over for a second and, uh, and you're just stuck in this is you this is literally you'll be like uh, so guys um hi uh, here's my pokemon card <laughs> and I over there and i start reading the comments of people be like poor dustin or dustin or whatever and then Gary come back you'd be like dustin that's soft <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <you're laughs> yeah so for me at least it was those moments where it was just like <laughs> you're getting definitely getting better at those like having to be a host when Gary's not there. Yeah, I just wish I was more prepared for it because it's like I don't expect it. Like it's just so last second when he just walks away. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you know what Every time you do a tea with Gary V, you should have something on the side ready. No, I, I've learned that now that I need to really be prepared just, for these. Pull something out. Yeah. Or you know what's even better? If you have a you have a cat, just keep your cat there. Anytime it's thing, just guys and just pet it. <laughs> no one's gonna say anything about that. I should I should? That's actually a good idea. Pull out the fur baby. Fur baby's for the win. <laughs> um, what's the what's the biggest takeaway or thing that you've learned working with Gary or working at Vayner? Um. As far as work related, uh, just so much how that I've learned. Like like I said, I when I first went there, I didn't know how to work a camera. I barely knew how to use Premiere. Like I knew very basic Adobe Premiere. Um, and I've just learned so much being there. Like I think mainly because I had no choice. Like yeah. uh, it was just kind of like, here, you need to figure this out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll figure it out. Um, so just that and the speed of like, we have to work fast and it's just crazy when I see 
be like how fast are I just realized like I, I had to, like I had to work fast. Cause also um, I didn't want to stay till like 10 o'clock at night and stuff like that. So I, I needed to work fast to like, so I could get home on time. Um, I just had to make my time more efficient. So that helped me become faster also. But as far as just like, I guess being around Gary, um, I've just become better at being more em empathetic to pe for people like just taking in negative like trying to like put the negative side of me out and like also take being able to handle negativity better um and also just not judging myself more like i'm always really like hard on myself but i've been just trying to be more like just think that it's not the end of the world kind of thing like that kind of just mindset towards stuff like it's not the end of the world no matter what happens like it's just not um but yeah, and I'll just, I think those are the two biggest things. I'm always working on myself, like every single day. I'm trying, I'm really trying to like get better. And it's really small steps I'm always having to take. Like, but I do know that I'm, I am like getting better. It's, it's slowly happening, but I know I'm getting better as far as like just being a better version of myself. Um, and I still have a lot of things I have to work on, but at the same time, I kind of enjoy not being good at it because I think in a way that kind of helps me make content for Gary because I'm able to think the same way that people that are like his content, uh, like I know I kind of understand better like what they're going through, I think, as cool. far as like, 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 like the shitty side of yourself, like I, I understand that. So I think that helps me make good content or more relatable content for people so I it's kind of weird like I am trying to be the better part of myself but I also kind of need that shitty part of myself to like understand people better I think no I get you I get you like those two things are so important speed and empathy yeah that's those that's like really really crazy um okay from there we're gonna get into something else that I think Gary has made a big impact on you. You have a little smirk, so I think I know what you're, you're you might think about it, but it's Pokemon cards. <laughs> Pokemon cards. So you've gotten really into it. You've gotten yeah. into it, and for anyone who's watching this, or anyone who just knows of Gary, knows that Gary's been on Sparks cards. He's been on the whole Pokemon game, the flip life, all that. So then you started, and I've always thought you went, because of how much you've been posting, that it feels like you've been on Pokemon for a while. But you've really only started, I think you said on the recent podcast or recent tea with Gary it's like only been like two or three months, not even. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've been going on. So give us a quick, if you can, maybe like a couple points, a quick Pokemon card crash course. Um, so I specifically am collecting the older ones, like the 1999 to 2000 ones, because I think a lot of uh, the people that can afford to pay for the cards probably are in my age group where they grew up with those exact cards. They're like, oh, I remember that card. So I went specifically for that kind of like vintage in a way. It's not that old, but like just that older nostalgia. Um, I just felt like there was going to be more focus on that, more money on that. So those are the cards that I specifically went for. If you're in that same mindset of me, uh, as far as like you think you're thinking okay that's pretty smart whatever um the first thing you should do the most like sought after the highest demand is the first edition cards which have a first edition stamp on the like center left side of the card mm -hmm. um and this is for so there's okay let me step take a step back actually when Pokemon first came out with those cards in America, it was called the base set, which is the first version of the cards. Then they came out like, like a spinoff. It was called the Jungle Series. Okay. Then they came up with another spinoff called Fossil Series. And then base set two, which is the same, like a reprint of the first version, except it has a number two on it. So you know that it's not the same exact one. And then they came out with like Rocket Series and so on. So on. There's, a, there's a huge list of different series of cards. But... Um, each one of those always had a first edition, pretty much meaning like this is the first printing of this series. 
Um, those are the more rare ones because they only had like one print run of it. While after that, they came out with, at least with the base set, they came out with a version called Shadowless, which is a reprint of that first edition. It just doesn't have the first edition stamp on it anymore. Okay. And then they came out with another, they re another version where it has a shadow. It's called, that one's called Unlimited because they're just unlimited, a ton of them. Um, those they just reprinted a lot. And it's kind of, it's most likely the, the unlimited version is what you had when you grew up as a kid. Like, cause that was just more heavily, uh, it, there was just a lot more inventory of it, a lot of printings of it. So that's most likely what you had when you were a kid. Um, Dustin, you there? First edition. Um, Sorry, you're cutting out. <laughs> yeah, you good? You good? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right, cool. We're back. So basically what you want is the first edition base set. That is definitely the most worth, like most high in demand. But now the prices have skyrocketed, so it's a lot harder to get. At least like it's a little bit more, it's, too, it's just too expensive. Like you're not going to want to pay $3,000 for a P Pikachu card that you don't even know. If you, especially if you have no idea like what you're doing, like I and I totally understand. I don't want to pay three thousand dollars for a card. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless you like really understand the market and stuff like that. So, what I'm seeing now is that unlimited version, which is basically like a third printing of that first series. Those prices are going up, um, because I think people are they just can't afford that. That first edition card is too expensive, but they still want the card because they just have that nostalgia attachment to it. Um, there's a lot of printing of those unlimited versions, but uh, yeah, those prices are going up. So what I what we've been noticing, me and my girlfriend, is just um, it's mainly those three or, or five characters that are really going up. And I think it might have to do with the TV show because we started rewatching the cartoon from like the 90s. Okay. I did it first just to kind of get a little bit more research, like to understand what characters are like, okay, like have a lot of screen time or like, like just attractive or like cool or whatever. Um, because I, I remember when I first started doing the buying cards, like I always, I always remembered Onyx when I was a kid, like the rock character. Yeah. Cause it was just huge. I was like, Oh crap, that, that Pokemon's huge. And then, but when I first started buying cards, Onyx was like 40 bucks, like super cheap compared to like Pikachu, which is like, which was at the time around like 700. Okay. Um, but now Onyx is, I don't see anyone selling it for less than 400 bucks. Exactly. And it's like, but for like an entire month, I was like, why is nobody messing with Onyx? Like, I think Onyx is badass. <laughs> like it's huge. It's a giant freaking Pikachu, I mean, Pokemon, it's going to kill everybody. But I guess it just wasn't a character. And all of a sudden that price went up and I was like, that's strange. And I thought the only reason for that to happen is because maybe people are rewatching the show and they just like it also, or they just know the character because it was Brock's Pokemon. So I'm, I'm not sure what's going on as far as like, what's the best character to go for. But obviously Charmander, Bulbasaur, Pikachu and Squirtle are like the heavy hitters because everybody knows them. Yeah. Like from the show or the video game. And it's just strange because those aren't even considered the rare cards. Um, like versus like Charizard, Blastoise, or Venusaur, which are like the last evolution and like the more rare cards. I mean, those are just way too expensive. They're like the price of cars. Really? Yeah. Like the highest Charizard that sold, I think, was around 70000 Jeez. Yeah. So for anybody who's watching or listening, go and dig up your old Pokemon cards if you have, yeah. or if you have money, like extra money or like money to play with or whatever, to go invest in some of these things. Yeah. But first, really got to get educated because I've seen a lot of people make bad purchases. Like people DM me like, hey, I just bought this. I'm just like... <laughs> like, <laughs> like how much did you pay and then i'm like i'm like 
oh god <laughs> um so yeah really start watching like i i only i just figured this out like i'm i wasn't a diehard pokemon fan um i just started watching videos in like late june and started getting really educated on youtube like just watching people opening cards watching people talking about them and kind of just like took all of that information and just started like making my own decisions mm. and using my own like rationale as far as like because i just because just like kind of how i was comparing to uh, making content for gary i'm the same I'm, i i don't didn't know anything about pokemon but now i'm getting into it so i am the current market like i'm probably thinking the same exact way that most people that are getting into this are thinking as far as like what character they like and stuff like that so I just kind of took all the information that I took in, but also thinking the same way a, a new person that getting into this might be getting into this. So those three characters, those four characters are definitely like the hot ones, gotcha. even though they're not even the rare cards. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure where I was going with this. Crash <laughs> course. Um, yeah. Hey, we'll get into something then. Um, is we're gonna go into YOLO. <laughs> okay. We're going YOLO, it's the rapid fire quick question for, for, for Live Good. So, once again, first thing that comes to your head favorite Vayner platform or project? God, I guess T with Gary V. No bias at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, most wanted Pokemon card? Your. Wanted? Your. No price doesn't matter? Price doesn't matter. Charizard PSA 10. First edition Charizard, yeah. Your Ash Ketchup, you start the game. Who are you choosing? Squirtle. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, IG Reels or TikTok? TikTok. Oh. Not even close. Okay. Um, last one is going to be Pokemon Red or Pokemon Blue? Um, like I said, I'm not a diehard Pokemon fan, so I don't even know what that means as I think. <laughs> okay. So for, for, it's the, if you had Game Boy. That's what I thought it was. Two games. But I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know the difference. Red was, red was Charizard. Red was okay. Charizard, the game was Char the red, and then blue was Blastoise, and it was just different games. But, but it was the same game, just different, like, theme. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I want to I wanna say that I know a lot about it. I couldn't afford one. I never got to yeah, have you know? Yeah, it was just it was a different game. It was oh, the same exact game. Same exact game, just different cover, I guess. Oh, like no. co colorways, I guess. There were also different, different Pokemons, like so Meowth was in the blue. Version. Oh, yeah. different characters. So Meowth was in the blue and uh, not in the red. Gotcha. So I guess there is a difference. Cool. Small differences. Okay. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna go share my screen, and we're gonna go into social hours. So we're gonna dive into your your Instagram. Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love how you're like okay. <laughs> I always just post things on there. I'm like I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> All right. So okay, we already went through that. This one. So yeah. you just posted these, and mm -hmm. it's great that we just talked about it. So which one out of these are is your favorite? Um, I think the first one, Squirtle, this one. because it is the mo one with the highest return right now that I have. Like, uh, I paid 600 for it. Jesus last, Christ. Yeah, the last one, though, like, sold today or yesterday for 2000 Oh. Same exact card. Um, but I also really like the Easter Pikachu one, just because I think it's so strange. What is that one? Is that one of these guys? Yeah, it's the one in the center. So oh. it's Pikachu with the Easter theme. It's like a Japanese promo card. Oh. Um, it's, I think it's just like really well done. Like as far as like, it's, it just looks difficult to like how they made it. Okay. Uh, I bought it for like 150. So this whole area here, what is that? Five, nine, 18, 21 of them. Uh-huh. 21, right? 29. Yeah, 21. Yep. What's the approximate cost or value of this at the moment? If you had in to. This, in this photo alone, so I paid, 
I did the math the other day because I was kind of curious. Um, I think it's four thousand dollars that I paid for everything in there. Um, if I sold everything today, I think I could do eleven thousand. After? Yeah. No. Oh, with, yeah. Total. Like that's oh, not okay. gross. I guess. Like so, I would have made like a five to six thousand dollar profit. Crazy. Yeah. That, is, that was crazy. Um, by the way, this was something I think I liked because you uh, did the podcast go out already? No, um, I, I, was, I started editing it yesterday and then just didn't finish because I, I got lazy. So I'll probably finish it tonight and then post it tomorrow. You got let me know because I'm gonna, I want to get in, I want to learn this. So this is cool. fun. Yeah, we, we try to like cover everything for beginners. Okay, amazing. So for you guys watching, um, Dustin's going on this podcast with B Luxie. Is that the person? Yeah, that's my girlfriend. Oh, okay. <laughs> And they're going to talk about all things Pokemon cards. So this is going to be cool. I'm, I'm stoked for it. Um, next one. This one. Is fun. All right, we're going to play this. That was, that, was that the video you were talking about previously? No. Okay, no. Um, I mean, that, is, that was a TikTok trend the whole like shot on the iPhone thing. So I made that when that was trending, but that happened on uh, June, 2015. Uh, I thought I knew, I thought I like just learned how to do that trick. It was called a crank arm grind. And I tried to do it on the street. Um, didn't work out, hit my tailbone really hard. That was probably one of the scariest ones that happened to me because like, I, I literally thought I got paralyzed for like a second. Like, like I just, like, as soon as I hit my tailbone, I felt this like shock through my entire body. And I was like, I, I like went numb for a second and I was like, oh my God, am I okay? And then that's why I was like in such a weird pain when you see me stand yeah. there for a second. I was like, oh fuck. Cause I was like, I really was got, got scared. Like I thought I got something really bad happened. And then, and then I just tried to shake it off and then I kicked the thing just to like make sure everything was working. <laughs> but I got mad because I, I, just, I just hate falling, but also wanted to kick something to make sure I can. Like I just wanted to make sure my body wasn't like in a weird like state. Poor pylon. Poor pylon. Yeah. And then. That's the real victim here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go next one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my Halloween costume. Um, I every year I before this I was always a social media app. So oh, like, really? Yeah, like so before that I was Snapchat, I think. Um, oh yeah, and then that was the first one, which was Facebook. Oh no, Instagram. That was old old Instagram. I forgot. That was the first one. YouTube. YouTube was the first one because I just always thought it was funny to be a video. Like I could be a pretend I'm a video inside of a cardboard layout and people liked it um that is so cool that was fun it, so yeah it was just always a costume and then I, the more and more that I get to know you the more and more I'm like you're comedic and like <laughs> and then yeah. now I know about the Seinfeld meme page then I'm like okay everything sort of makes sense <laughs> that I think brings on to what well, this one <laughs> I wonder if it's not really you I just saw that on the internet. And I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Wait, is this really you or not? Is no, it's not me. Okay. I just I'm thought not. it kind of looked like me. So I was like, I thought it would be funny to post. I mean, I'm not trying to be racist or anything. I'm <laughs> not like, I was like, this totally could have been you. Yeah, it, it, I could see it. That's why. Did you have that? Did you ever have that bowl cut growing up? I did. Oh, me too. Um, uh, me too. <laughs> I, think, I think like eight to four, uh, 13. Um, and then I guess... This is the last one. We'll pause it there, but okay, dude. So, like, where was that? Like, what did that? What was the whole reasoning behind that? 
that was actually like part of one of my first YouTube videos because uh, when I first started YouTube, I thought I could just do fun stuff or creative, like weird stuff, just funny stuff. Um, Cause I was watching a lot of prank YouTube channels at the time. Okay. Um, so I kind of like was trying to go to that route, but also incorporate BMX into it. Um, I think at the time it was in 2016 uh, the, that T-Rex costume was just like all over the place, but I never saw anyone do it on a bike. Okay. So I thought I could just be the first one to do that. Um, then realized how hard it was to do. Like it was just so hard to see inside that thing. It was like I was blindfolded pretty much. Um, but yeah, people love, like when I, when I rode it that day, it was at a jam. It was, it was like a Halloween jam, which is like a, just like an event where like a bunch of bike riders come to like just hang out and ride and stuff. Uh, everyone loved it they, they thought it was hilarious and yeah i just i i don't know i've always been like a class clown i guess or i always wanted to be yeah. i didn't get that award my senior year so i was kind of pissed <laughs> all right dude well i'm gonna sort of end that there and i wanted to say so you're on tea with gary v you've got this crazy instagram account that i just realized and learned about. you know you have a youtube and you've sort of now become this personality that everybody around the world knows of um but now i'm going to give you the spotlight on the serving it up podcast and i want feel free to just let people know anything you want to know anything you want to tell somebody maybe where they can find you if there's something cool you want to say or advice the serving it up podcast is your stage um i mean the only thing i would like to say is i guess if you're like it, whatever age you are, I guess, um, just be grateful. If you're, if you're able to watch this, that means you have internet. That means you have a computer or a phone or something like, just be grateful what you, for what you have. And I think we forget that sometimes, like I, even I do. Um, and I just kind of take a step back and try to be like, you know what, I gotta be more like grateful for and thankful for everything I have. Cause I could be in such a, worse place than I am and I just got to appreciate everything that I have uh, every everyone in, in my life and just every, especially now like with you asking me to do this is just like what the fuck like uh, I don't, <laughs> like who the hell am I like I'm nobody like for me I'm more like you want to be on my podcast I'm like thank god I mean that's why I, I do it just because it's like I'm grateful that you even are interested in me or think I'm interesting at all and I think I'm a fucking loser all the time. Like that's how I always think I am. So it's like, I'm just, I'm just really thankful for everything. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Um, and this, it reminds me of like when Gary was on Hot Ones where he just said, I have nothing to say at the end. He just, and I, I'm kind of the same. Like I, that, that clip always like got to me. I was like, damn, like that's awesome. So. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to plug myself or anything like that. I don't care about that. It's just, if you, especially if you're in your twenties now, like, um, just realize how much time you have. Like, I understand I was in that time too, where I was 23 and thinking, oh my God, I, I have only seven years left to figure out what the hell I have to do with my life. And it's like, that's just not true. It's just all bullshit. Like figure out what you like. You have plenty of time. I started my career or like my life completely over from when I was 32 like started from zero I was living with my parents I had no job I had pretty much I spent all my money trying to just survive for two years um yeah I just started all over and I don't regret it, any of it like obviously because I'm just really happy where I am and obviously at the same time I totally understand if you're not in a good place now where you're like yeah it's easy for you to say like you're not where I am and I get that too. Um, but just don't give up, keep going, keep, just keep trying. Just realize that it could be so much worse. And uh, yeah, just don't give up um, unless it's like to the point where it's like, hey, you need to, like it's been 10 years and nothing's progressed. Then it's like, okay, you need to take a step back and really reevaluate yourself to be like, is this something you should be doing? But yeah. if they're, if you're seeing progress, then keep going. Cause there's probably a chance that something can special can happen. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, 
thank you. I'm really, really happy that you were willing to hop onto my podcast. And honestly, like, like I said, the first time I saw you on T with Gary V, and then from from that until now, it summarizes sort of what you just said, which was you've grown so much in such a short period of time, and you look back at it, you're like, whoa, it's only been a couple months, but it feels like forever. Yeah. And I think we should take that and push that for how we see life and everything. So, yeah, that, that was amazing. Well, dude, thank you for coming on to episode 10 and blessing us with your story. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Until next time, check out Serving It Up Podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah.